Hello and welcome to the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. Thank you very much indeed for tuning into this episode. Today is the final episode in our series in conjunction with Heeltread.com. In this series so far, we have told a, a number of the stories which have inspired lines of Heeltread.com's wonderful motorsport-inspired socks. And on, if you go on to Heeltread.com and you look on their website, there's all kinds of, of socks inspired by rally cars, Formula One cars, um, performance road cars, you name it. Heeltread.com will have made a sock for it. So, as for example, if you own a Golf GTI, you can have a pair of matching Golf GTI socks. Uh, if you're lucky enough to own a BMW M3, you can have a pair of BMW M3 socks and so on. But in this series, um, we've talked about some of the stories of the racing car uh, inspired socks uh, as, as well. So in the first episode, we talked about the story of the Wins Ford GT, the one and only privately entered Ford GT at Le Mans. We talked about the legendary Audi Quattro rally car and most recently talked about the Subaru Impreza WRC. So throughout this series, we've told the stories behind um, some of um, Heeltread.com's sock designs and what they were inspired by. So I have I've became aware of Heeltread.com about a year ago um, via an advert on Instagram. And uh, as for any of you that know me, You'll know that if you see me see me about normally, I will be wearing some form of motorsport inspired merchandise. Um, so when I came across Heeltread.com, I was able to get bright, colourful socks with a motorsport theme that was the ideal for me. And I now have a bigger collection of Heeltread.com socks than I would care to admit. So I got in touch with the lovely folks uh, at Heeltread.com in Portugal um, who very kindly agreed to provide four pairs of their lovely socks to give away to some of our lovely loyal subscribers. So, all you need to do to be in with a chance to win one of these lovely pairs of socks is to subscribe or follow our channel, the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast, on the Podbean app. So you can download Podbean for both Android and for Apple devices as well. So get everyone involved, get your whole family involved, subscribe and be in with a chance to win a lovely pair of their socks. And we will be holding the draw for those um, for those socks live on our Facebook and Instagram pages over the next few weeks. So do stay tuned for that. So what is the final episode going to talk about? Well, this is something that's really quite close to home, actually. Today, we're going to talk about the Volvo 850 British touring car. So you're thinking, God, we've talked about Ford GTs, we've talked about Audi Quattros, talked about Super Impressors, and now you're finishing the series talking about a Volvo. Yes, we are, because this particular car today we're going to talk about is probably the most recognisable touring car ever built. So the car that I'm referring to, if I told you that it was the Volvo estate car that raced in the British Touring Car Championship. So if you're a fan of motorsport, you're likely to have seen this car in action. So back in 1994, Volvo entered into the very fast growing British Touring Car Championship. The British Touring Car Championship at that time was a truly international series and throughout the mid to late 1990s, it was one of the premier categories of motorsport in the world. You had factory teams from Renault, Honda, Ford, Vauxhall, and many, many more. At one point, there was over 10 factory teams taking part with two cars with professional drivers. A lot of former Formula One drivers were even employed to come in to the British Touring Car Championship at that time. Renault, for example, they um, campaigned their then new uh, Laguna saloon car in the British Touring Car Championship and they enlisted the help of the Williams Formula One team to both design and run this car. And it was reported that many of the manufacturers were spending up to £10 million a year on the British Touring Car Championship. Such was its appeal and such was the, the, the technological freedom of the regulations. 
And at the time, you know, you had, you know, it was on Sunday Grandstand and uh, here in the United Kingdom and, and on British television. And you had if, some of the earlier races, you had Murray Walker on commentary. And Murray Walker commentating, Murray Walker is is a hero of mine, the, the, the legendary voice of Formula One. And the fact that he could make any Formula One race sound interesting just showed you how good a commentator he was. So when you when you put him in front of a British touring car race, which was very much crash bang wallop, you, you're in for a treat listening. If you watch back some of the older races with Murray Walker commentating, it's just uh, it's just iconic. It's fa- fa- absolutely fantastic. So at that time, it was very much it was a great opportunity for car manufacturers to. Do the old the, the, the old adage in motorsport: win on a Sunday and sell on a Monday. Because if you were, um, you know, they, they call it the middle, man, middle middle management sales representatives cars. That was it. You had a you know a Vauxhall Vectra racing against a Ford Mondeo, racing against a Honda Accord, Nissan Primera. So normal four door you know sales reps car that went up and down the motorway every single day. But on a Sunday, a car that looked like one of these. Um, would race uh, in the British Touring Camp t- Touring Car Championship with guys like John Cleland in the Vauxhall Vectra, Jason Plato in the Renault Laguna, um, Ivan Muller in the Vauxhall, um, Alan Menu in the, in the Ford latterly, Rickard Rydell in the Volvo. It was just fantastic. But probably the car that most people would remember from that particular time was the Volvo 850. Because the Volvo 850 was actually an estate car. It was not a saloon car like all of the other cars in the championship. In 1994, Volvo entered the championship in conjunction with Tom Walkinshaw Racing, or TWR for short. And TWR were contracted for three years to technologically develop the Volvo touring car program and to run the race team as well. (coughs) So... The fact that they were coming into the championship for the first time, they knew that in the first season they weren't going to come in and win straight away. It would take time to learn the series, learn the cars and develop the technology. So very cleverly, the Volvo marketing department at the time decided that they wanted to really do something a little bit different to use their um, to use this really popular platform of the British Touring Car Championship to promote their brand. At that time, Volvo was very much like it was the antique dealer's car. It's very much um, the brand image of Volvo was was not sporting whatsoever. And Volvo were keen to change that because at the time they were releasing quite a lot of high performance versions of their, you know, quite sedate looking cars. And one of them was the Volvo 850 Estate. Now, even as far as estate cars go, the Volvo 850 Estate was boxy in its design would be one way to describe it. Literally looks like uh, <laughs> it, it, it just looks like it's like it's been designed with a ruler. So not the ideal base to build a racing car from a higher center of gravity than a normal um, than a normal saloon car, and quite a lot of weight behind the rear axle as well. But Tom Walkinshaw Racing and Volvo developed this car in secret and only right up until the very last moment did they reveal that they would be entering this estate car into the British Touring Car Championship. The drivers that were enlisted to drive this amazing car were the Dutchman Jan Lammers, former Formula One driver and Le Mans legend, and um, Swede Rickard Rydell, who went on to win the British Touring Car Championship in 1998 at the wheel of the then Volvo X40 saloon car. So this, the, 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 the amazing impact that this Volvo 850 estate car had, they took it and competed with it in the British Touring Car Championship, jumping over the curbs and racing wheel to wheel with the normal saloon cars. It, they got so much publicity out of it. Although they weren't winning races, um, they were they were getting so much attention. John Cleland, um, to this day, is still a Volvo dealer. So John Cleland, who raced all of his days in the British Touring Car Championship for Vauxhall, he actually ran a car dealership during the week. So he was a fully paid professional driver with Vauxhall, at the weekend and would then go and run his car dealerships uh, during the week. Now, 
as I say, even to this day, he is still a Volvo dealer in, in Gala Shields in the Scottish border. And John Cleland said, he said, you know, when, when at that time, people would walk into the showroom on Monday, Tuesday, and see a Volvo, Volvo 850 estate sitting there, and they'd point at it and go, is that the car that we saw in Sunday Grandstand at the weekend? And he would go, yes, it was. And it, it, he genuinely sold a number of cars uh, because of that attention from the British Touring Car Championship. And I love stories in motorsport where doing something a little bit different in motorsporting activity can really have a benefit in the showroom selling uh, cars, you know, switching people's, you know, for example, if you were buying a Volvo 850 uh, estate at that time, you're probably, buy you'd be buying it over a BMW um, 3 Series or 5 Series estate or a Mercedes E-Class estate or whatever. So you were making a, a big change in, in, in choice. Now, the road car that, the, the, that they based the touring car from was a really special bit of kit. So the road car was called the 850 Turbo. It was had a 2.3 litre turbocharged five-cylinder engine with 225 brake horsepower, which back in 1994 was a significant amount of power in any car. Bearing in mind, that's the same amount of power that you'll get in a modern-day Golf GTI. So in 1994, to have that in an estate car was really, really impressive. The race car, the regulations dictated that the engine could be no bigger than two litres and could not be either turbocharged or supercharged. So, but the, the, so they had no turbo in the race car, only two litres, but had 290 horsepower from its five-cylinder motor. Now, I am a huge fan of five-cylinder engines. There's two particular famous five-cylinder engines. There's, of course, this one in the Volvo um, touring car and also the Audi Quattro. So if you've ever heard the deep sonorous boom of an Audi Quattro rally car, that is a five-cylinder engine. And to this day, Audi still use a two-and-a-half-litre five-cylinder engine in their RS3 um, performance car as, as well. So I love the sound of a five-cylinder engine, and that was something that really stood the Volvo uh, apart. Now, today, a good... Vo this, this gives you an example as to how well the car was thought of at the time, because today, a good condition Volvo 850R road car will cost you about £25,000. So the car is now very much, and because of that, it's now very much seen as a modern classic car. And it would not be that, it would not be that way if it weren't for this Volvo, um, this Volvo touring car, racing car. You know, at the, at the time, they'd had no testing prior to its debut at Thruxton. In fact, Rickard Rydell and Jan, Jan Lammers had only driven the car for a few hundred metres around the yard at the TWR workshop. So it was very much cobbled together in a bit of a hurry and cobbled together in secret, of course. But I, rem I do remember the, the images of the Volvo cars hopping over the kerbs in the British Touring Car Championship. And it really hit home to me when my father... Um, he actually took, I remember the day like it was yesterday, uh, in 1996, or it was either 96 or 97, my father took delivery of a turquoise blue Volvo T5, which was, to me, I mean, he could have come in, come in with a Ferrari and I wouldn't have been that impressed compared to this, because a Volvo T5 estate, it was a Volvo T5 estate, it was a fast, fast car at that time, and it was, you know, that was the car that Rickard Rydell drove, and Rickard Rydell was one of my heroes, and Rickard Rydell became one of my heroes because Dad had this Volvo T5 as well. We called it Tony, the T5 was its, <laughs> was, was its name, and I remember going to watch the British Touring Car Championship at our local track here at Knock Hill in Scotland, and Dad would take me there in the Volvo T5, and we would watch Ricard Rydell. By that time, they'd moved on to the, the newer model, the Volvo S40. So it, it's <laughs> it, the, the change that it made for Volvo. Now, if you look at you look at Volvo, Volvo is actually quite a it's actually a relatively fashionable brand. And you, you mostly now, like many car manufacturers. Their range is, f is focused around SUVs as such as the way, but it's seen that the, the, the age profile and the demographic of people that buy Volvos has changed completely. And a big, big part of that 
was because of this Volvo 850 BTCC. Now, the, the livery that the, um, the Volvo um, touring car wore was beautiful and lovely, simple design with white and a couple of different shades of blue and grey across it. And that is the design that has been emulated in the heeltread.com sock line uh, that was inspired by the story of this Volvo 850 BTCC estate. If you've never seen the car, just put it into YouTube and, and watch because it is just an extraordinary looking thing and looks so out of place um, racing in between all the other much smaller cars. So go and go and check that out. Of course, if you would like to win a pair of these lovely heeltread.com Volvo 850 socks, you can do by subscribing to our show on the Podbean app. So that concludes our heeltread.com uh, series. It's been brilliant fun researching the, the, the four stories and telling you all about the Winds 4 GT, the Audi Quattro, the Subaru WRC, and finally this one, the Volvo 850 BTCC. Thank you very much to the lovely folks at Heeltread for um, providing um, four pairs of socks for our, for our subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope we can do something like this again very, very soon indeed. So thank you very much to you all for listening. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.